Hi everyone, Damon Steele here with Emotiva Audio. I would like to give you a quick video of how to set up your processor. So once you have unboxed your unit, you will want to use HDMI 2 out of the processor and run it into the ARC HDMI input of your TV. Then you will take a source device and plug that into HDMI 1. A source being a Roku, a satellite box, a cable box, anything that um, generates audio and video um, is considered a source. Once you've done that, you will want to connect your analog outputs from the processor to your amplifier. Our processors come with XLR outputs. Um, if your amplifier is equipped with an XLR input, it's a simple XLR connection. If your amplifier is unbalanced, we do sell an XLR to RCA adapter. You will then hook up your speaker wires to the amplifier. All right, now I'd like to go through the menu and first step setup. All right, everyone, now that we've got the unit hooked up, um, we have on-screen display. I'd like to go into speaker setup. We're going to go into preset one and into the size menu. In this menu, we can set our speakers either small or large or none if there is not a speaker in that location. Out of the box from the factory or if you do a factory reset, uh, we do have it set for all speakers to be active. That way, um, if you hook something up, we're sure to get sound from every jack. Now you will want to tailor this to your specific speaker setup so that if a speaker is not in that location, the processor will know to take the information that should be in that channel and down mix it to the next appropriate channel. So right out of the box, um, set your speakers either small, large, or none. And then also for your height speakers, you can set the location, whether it be top, which is in ceiling, height, which is on wall mounted up high, or Dolby Reflective. Dolby Enable is what we call it. Once you've set up your speakers, you'll want to go into Levels. As we navigate into Levels, there may be a slight delay because of our live AV. As we make changes in the menu, the changes are applied in real time so that you can hear the change take place. Now in the Levels menu, I really enjoy this for troubleshooting and first time setup to make sure my signal flow is proper. This will confirm that the processor is outputting on the channel that you select. It is flowing through the amplifier and out to the properly designated speaker. Meaning if it's highlighted on the screen and I move from levels over to that speaker, that speaker will then start test toning. It'll make a pink noise. Um, and you want to confirm that left front truly is left front making the noise. And again, as you cycle through the speakers in the room, you'll want to confirm that each speaker that is highlighted on the screen is the actual speaker making the noise. As you're in there, it is good to set levels by moving over to the output level of that particular speaker. The idea is to level match every speaker in the room. You can download a free app on your phone, uh, sit in the listening position holding your phone up. I like to start with left front at zero. That is my object or that is my target SPL level um, that's read back on the phone. And then as I navigate up to center, I will match my center to my left front then I will match my right front to my left front. I will match my right width again to the left front, that DB reading that I had when I first started. 
After setting levels, you will also want to go in and set distances. In this menu, from the listening position, you would measure from your listening position to the left front speaker and record that distance in feet and in inches or in meters. You will do this for each speaker in the room, just navigating through, changing the distance for each one. And this measurement is always taken from the listening position to the face of your speaker. Now that we have our speaker set up, the unit is pretty much ready for everyday use. But there are a couple of things I would like to kind of hone in on, just little, um, I guess, particulars or nuances that, that may be specific to your setup. In the advanced menu, there is an option here for standby power. Um, this option from the factory is set to video remains on. This has been an update in later code revision, so if yours doesn't, you probably have an earlier rendition of code, but um, in the code that we are shipping now and, and going forth, video remains on. This basically is a high power uh, state. The internal processor continues to run as the outside looks like it is in standby, but internally the, the, the machine is operating. And this is to provide a video pass-through from your source up to the TV and allow you to use your TV speakers without the processor being on. We also will probably want to take a look at HDMI CEC. CEC is Consumer Electronics Control. Basically, this is a provision for communication to take place across the HDMI cable for one product to tell another product what to do. Sometimes this is a nuisance as it makes assumptions about what the user is intending to do. And sometimes it can make life a little simpler. From the factory, uh, the enable option is on. And that means there is just a communication of CEC taking place. There is also the option for volume control, input change, power on and off, things of that nature, where if you're controlling one device, it can then tell another device to follow suit. The unfortunate thing is with this, all products communicate a little bit different language and not all of them are translated well or carried forth as, as desired. So you may want to go in and make changes that fit your system needs. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time today. I hope this was helpful in setting up your processor. If you need even further information, please visit us at emotiva.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.